let me record. Okay, so we were looking at this problem from the homework and I was saying, you know, you could, you could do here, look at the circuit, you could do a source transformation. I think a lot of people did. You do a source transformation on this, right? Um, what's true about the V and IS? I, I would replace those with what? A current source. Cur yeah, current source. Parallel and a parallel resistor. Now the thing that'll bake your noodle on this is, is this IS right here the same as that IS? No. Is that an alternative current source? Is this just transformation with an alternative voltage source? Yeah, so so I'll generally show my voltage sources with a plus minus like this, although you'll sometimes see them with a, a sign. It doesn't matter, right? Um, but But looking at this, the thing I guess I wanted to point out is the current flowing through this resistor right here is the same as the current flowing right there. All right, I wanted to point this out because I don't think people get this, but that's the idea of a source transformation is that I'm trying to get something that's equivalent from the terminals, right? This is the idea we talked about with the Thevenin and equivalent. So if I say, here's the terminals of this guy, the terminals are here, V, I, V, I. The circuits, these circuits are equivalent from the perspective of their terminals. Okay, so the terminal current in both of those circuits is the same. So let me expand that out. Here. Okay, so in this this very so when it's big like that, I would draw very poorly. Um, the current here looks like it should be the same as the current here, right? It's it's not going to be because what you're doing is you're replacing this this branch right here you're replacing it with this parallel combination of things. So they're equivalent at the terminal. So this current and this current are the same, all right? That probably bakes your mind a little bit because when you look at this and you say, well, what's the short circuit current here? The short circuit current here is this over this, all right? Um, that's, that's a little bit different if you consider, well, I'm gonna have some other stuff connected to this circuit. Right? There's some other impedances that are connected here that affect what current comes out of this terminal. All right. You guys follow me on that? Okay. All right. I thought that was kind of a nuanced one that I think a lot of people probably didn't catch. All right. All right. Let me go through and go through some of the examples that I've got then for today. All right. So I've got a couple of examples kind of teed up. Um, okay, now, since I'm projecting, it's going to take me a second to figure out which one I got to do. The guys in the room aren't seeing me do this. Uh, well, the other day it wouldn't do it. Here we go. Display settings. Duplicate. Here we go. Okay. All right. Now everybody's seeing the same thing. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so here's here's the circuit. Um, and I want to find the Thevenin equivalent for this guy. All right. So I want to find the Thevenin equivalent looking into those terminals right there. So that means I got to do what here in this case? Yeah. So I got to find the open circuit voltage for this guy, VOC. So that's between those terminals A, B. What's the other thing I got to do? Yeah, I need to find my equivalent impedance here. Now, um, how do I, and I'll throw this to somebody online here. So how do I find the equivalent impedance? You have to find I short circuit and VOC and then divide VOC by I. Yeah, circuit. that's, yeah. So in this case, why can't I just, find the impedance looking into that terminal. Dependent sources are worst dependent. enemy. Yeah, dependent sources are our worst enemy. Okay, that's our theme for the day, okay. That's why Gideon was the star, apparently. He's got the line of the day. All right, so so, so when looking at looking at this here, um, for this particular circuit, all right, there's, there's two ways to do it. We talked about this the other day. If I wanna get the impedance, I can put a test source in there. And I think that's the way a lot of you guys do it. It's fine, okay? I'm not gonna do that today. I'm gonna put a short, 
across here and I'm going to find I short circuit. Okay. But let's start with VOC. Okay. Let's start with the VOC. In fact, um, yeah, we'll start with we'll start with the VOC on this guy. So so how should I approach this problem, do you think? I draw the short circuit. Well, I'm gonna do the OC, the VOC first. Okay. Okay, so how should I how should I approach that guy? Nodal. Nodal. Um, well. I guess there's a lot of ways we could we could say this, right? Let's let's say I'm going to do mesh because that's what I'm prepared to do, right? Um, so so here's here's VOC, okay. All right. So if I did mesh, um, why, part of the reason. That's, so why did I do mesh, right? You have currents defined. I have currents. I have current sources defined for me. So so if I look at this, I'm going to say here's one mesh current. Here's one. So I'll call this I A. Or actually, I'm gonna do it this way. Call this I A. Call this I B. And then, well, technically there's one out here as well, right? But there isn't one. So, so this is actually kind of nice because I kind of sort of know both of them already, right? Looking at this, what's I A? Four amps. All right. What about I B? Somebody online. It would be two um, V. Yeah, It'd be two V X. Right, I B is two V X. It's a current source, so it's known. The current in that mesh has to be that. So two V X. Now the question is, what is two V X? Would it would V X be I A times the impedance of that capacitor? Yeah, right. So if I look at if I look at this, IA is the is the mesh current up top. So this guy is actually pretty well defined for me. VX, if I def this, I swear I like being careful with this. I I have a capacitor here. Capacitor has a negative impedance, so I got to follow the passive sign convention thing. So what I'm going to do is, given the way VX is defined, I'm going to say that this is IA goes into the plus terminal times the impedance of the capacitor like that. All right, that way, because what, what this guy is going to turn out to be is negative, right? It's going to become negative IA times J1, right? Be careful about this, because following the passive sign convention, I got a current flowing into the plus terminal, right? That's why I write it as IA times Z sub C. And then I put the negative sign in there because of the impedance. So what's confusing is when I, once I get capacitors, I can have negative signs because of the impedance now. There's multiple reasons why I can start getting negative signs. So because IA is four amps, this guy becomes what? Negative four J. Okay. All right. So I know what the current is in both my meshes already. Okay. So that doesn't help me with VOC or does it? It's given to me. Yeah, it's given to me in this case. Yeah. So, so yeah, again, I'll give it to the online crew here. So how do I figure out VOC? Well, if we could find the voltage across that dependent source, we could add the two voltages together. We could. Yeah, so you're saying if I know the voltage across the two VX current source and I, and I know VX, I could figure that out. That would work. We have a super mesh here too, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. Where's the super mesh? What what's included in that super mesh? Like what's the loop? This the super mesh loop that we would use. What's in it? The one on resistor. It would be the one with the dependent current source and the. Well, um... So we so we we never have a current source in a super mesh. Right, so oh, that's true. It, yeah, this is tricky, right? It's not. It's so. What it is is it's actually we have the we have to have a complete loop. So what's the loop? I, it looks like I can look at the that loop has to have no current sources in it. So where would we have a loop here that has no current sources? IA. IA is a well. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. So I would I could go up this way, up this way, up this way, and this is the part that'll freak you out. I can go this way, like that. So can I do super mesh even though we have open terminals? Mm -hmm. We don't need the short circuit. VOC, VOC is a voltage. In other words, if I took a multimeter and I went in the lab and I stuck the black terminal at B and it stuck the red terminal at A, there's a voltage there, right? Around any loop, the sum of the voltages is zero. So in this case, VOC is equal to the sum of the voltages across those three elements, okay? So um, what I'm going to do, can I, I can't do this while I'm live. Crap. All right, what I want to do is say, all right, redraw this circuit. All right, this was VX. Now for me to do this, what I called, I said this was IA. I said this was IB. And I said, this over here is VOC. Now, like I said, the other day, I said, the first thing I want to do anytime I do nodal or anytime I do mesh analysis is I, I need to do what first? I didn't do it here, but I should have done it. Uh, put your polarities and like the voltages across yep. each element. Yeah, define, define the polarities of my voltages. Okay, so I'm going to do that. I did that here. So this was a one ohm resistor. This guy is a J, a one J inductor. All right. You can see that on the previous slide. It's one J. All right. One ohm and minus one J. Okay. So I called this guy for whatever reason, I called him V sub J, I guess, cause he was a J, right? I called this V one and that guy was told to be VX. Okay. Now I, I do it this way because I like to write out, I said the other day, my KVL. So I'm doing mesh. Mesh means I do KVLs, right? So if I'm doing my KVLs like this, then let's start in the lower, uh, whatever, the lower left corner there, right? So I'm going to write this out in terms of those voltages. So what do I say here? So I'm going to go through this 1J inductor first, right? So... What, how do I write, how do I write this, write this in terms of the voltages? it would be a positive VJ. It sure would be. VJ, and then it would be. Minus V1. Yep. Then minus VX. Then what? Uh, plus VOC. Plus VOC. Now VOC, I got, there's, I got nothing on that guy. What I'm going to say is VOC is equal to V1 minus VX. Oh, yeah. V1 plus Vx minus Vj. Okay. Now, do I know those things? I, I, sh I sure do, right? So what do I put in there for V1? Uh, Ia times the 1 ohm. Not Ia times the 1 ohm. I, Ia minus Ib. Shoot, yeah, that's right. All right. Times one right? because in this case i have ia going into the plus terminal ib going out of the plus terminal all right that's where i got my my signs and then vx we already solved for vx was ia times negative 4j or sorry negative j which is the impedance on that guy and then vj what is VJ, this guy here? IB times J. Yep, IB times J. Okay. And we said previously IA was four amps with an angle of zero degrees. And we said IB was, well, we didn't solve for it. It was two times VX. So that means it's negative eight J. Now, one of the things that's always kind of screws me up with that, what the heck does negative eight J mean again? Eight with an angle of negative 90 degrees. So again, what that means is that I would have eight cosine 
Omega T minus 90 degrees. That probably doesn't mean as much to you because honestly, let's be honest, the labs aren't that great. You haven't spent a whole lot of time looking at, at this in a, in a laboratory. To me, I can think of this as when I see eight with an, with an angle of negative 90, that means that I'm gonna see a cosine wave shifted by negative 90 degrees, okay? All right, and, and that's ultimately what we're really solving for, okay? All right, so what I would do at this point, there's no, there's no fancy MATLAB of, of any kind that I really need to do here. I can plug all those numbers into this and solve that out pretty quickly, all right? So if I do that, what do I end up with? Um, I'm not gonna go all the way through that math, all right? My VOC, I'll post out the, the full solution that I have for this, but if you, if you calculate that out, you get negative four plus four J like that. All right. Now, if you, if, if I get that, let's say you guys get that and you want to get that in MATLAB, if I wanted to get the magnitude of this, you know, Yahoo says, okay, I do the square root of the real squared plus the imaginary squared. How would you get the angle of this guy? Inverse, inverse, tangent. Inverse, tangent. inverse tangent would be the wrong way to do it. You talking about MATLAB code? Well, I mean, you could, so, so what's wrong with inverse tangent here? You have to add or subtract by. I, I have to think about where this, I have to think about where this guy's at in the plane. Yeah, he's over here, right? Arctan's not defined over there. Arctan's only defined in quadrant one and quadrant two, or four, sorry, one and four. You can do angle. So I'd have to, so what, I, yeah, in, in MATLAB takes care of that if I use the angle command. All right, so if I say angle, it's automatically going to say, well, I know that guy's over there, right? That's, that's why what, what I do for this is I would say angle of VOC is probably what I would call it. Okay. All right, and if you get the angle of that, you should be able to see the angle that's going to be 135 degrees. Right, you, I, hopefully you can see that. If they got the same magnitude, that guy has to be at a 45 degree angle to something. So it's 135, um, give myself some more space here. Wouldn't it kick that out as radians though? It would kick that out as radians, right? So it would come back as, what is, I don't know, that's seven pi over four, five pi over four, or something like that. If you, but yeah, you're right, it would, it would come out that way. But what I would do is I would, I would do radians to degrees or multiply by 180 over five. But, but you're, you're correct, it would come out in radians, but it takes into account the, the angle, uh, the, the fact that it's in the second or third quadrant. That way you don't have to think about the second or third quadrant piece, okay? You know, I know when I, when I teach in 2254, that's one of the things that kills lots of people on the first test, you know, is I make sure all my angles are over there. I just spent 30 minutes using A10 and if I would have used angle. All right, 5.6569 angle 135 degrees. Okay, so that, that's my VOC. Now the approach I said I was taking in this problem is, all right, I want to get my Thevenin and equivalent. So in this case, what am I going to, what did I say I was going to do to get the impedance? Now you need a short circuit current. Now I need a short circuit current. So I should have made more copies of this. Um, do this. This is the problem. Once I'm projecting, okay. All right. So I'm going to put a short circuit here. Okay. And I'm going to call this guy IA. Now, one of the reasons why I wanted to do this is because a lot of you guys, I'm gonna call this ISC for I short circuit. A lot of you guys would say, you know IA right now, don't you? That's already, that's just four amps, right? Do you know IB? No. no, okay. Now, a lot of people would probably say that they do know IB because we solved for it already, but we solved for it in a different circuit. Okay, this circuit is not the same as this circuit. I've got a short circuit here on the output, all right? If I got a short circuit on the output, that means that 
some current is flowing now over here, which is changing the behavior of the circuit. So I need to resolve. I see people do that all the time on tests, right? They, they think that, all right, I got it for the first part. Now I don't need to do it a second time, but they do. It's a different circuit. All right, so, so keep that in mind when you go through this. So if, if I'm gonna solve this problem, now what do I need to do? Yeah, re, re, yeah, exactly. First place for me to do is probably relabel everything. Call this guy VJ again. Now I don't change the polarities. For me, I never change polarities. All right, I, if I choose them at the beginning, they are what they are and then they stay the same forever. All right, and I recommend that you do that. Don't change. All right, keep, keep everything constant here. All right, so what, what do I need to do here to solve this particular problem? I need, first of all, how many equations do I need here? Four. All right, I hear three in the room and I hear four online. I would say they're both wrong. Two. Three is kind of right. All of a super mesh. So, so super mesh, so, so Gideon, how many do I need? They need two regular equations and one auxiliary equation. Well, okay. We only need the one because we already know IA. <laughs> we know IA, so technically I, I need two, right? Right. I mean, I guess in, in general here, I need three, right? Because I got three meshes, but I know IA already is four amps. That's known. So I got two equations and two unknowns. Um, so one of them, one of the equations I have here is going to be what? What's the what's the quote unquote auxiliary equation that I have here? A I minus or I A minus I B. So what what gives me the auxiliary equation? What 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 makes a super mesh here? Well, what but what makes the super mesh happen? The the fact that two meshes share a current source. Yeah, I B and I short circuit. I B and I short circuit. So that means that. IB minus I short circuit equals 2VX. Yes, IB minus I short circuit equals 2VX, like that. All right, now that doesn't mean we know what 2VX is yet, right? But, but we have that relationship. So, all right, um, what else do we got? So we got to look at our super mesh now, right? So our super mesh, how do I look at that? So I'm going to say zero equals and do the same thing again. So zero equals VJ, then what? Minus V1. Minus V1. Minus V1. Minus VX. Right, because I, I go, yeah, so I go minus to plus on that guy, and then I go minus to plus on my VX, and I'm done, right? Because in this case, the rest of that loop is through a short circuit. All right, so I don't got anything else to worry about. All right, so then I go in and I start plugging stuff in here. So zero equals V sub J. V sub J is what times what? J times IB. J times IB. Okay, because the impedance of that guy, that inductor is J. And IB flows into the plus terminal. Then I have minus V1. Okay, so the way I think about this is minus... And then I look at the current. So what current's flowing into the plus here? IA. IA, which is, I'm gonna just put as four, okay. Minus IB times one, okay. Then what? What about VX? I got a minus to begin with, because the minus so came from the KPL. It would be IA minus ISC. Yep. Times negative one. Yep. So 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 the minus is in the front, and then I have times I A, which is four amps, and then times minus J. All right, because that's the impedance of this guy. So I A flows into the plus terminal. So this this is this is wacky a little bit. I to, I mean this is where you guys make huge mistakes, right? And this is where you'll make mistakes if you don't. Everybody tries to get to the number right away, but this is where all the work happens is on this step right here, okay? And this is really important. If you look at, if you look at this VX term, okay? There's a minus sign that came in from the way I wrote KVL here. This minus sign came from the way I wrote KVL. 
there's a minus sign here that came from the impedance. And then I got to be careful because the current IA went into the plus terminal, that voltage source. If IA had been going against it, then there would have been a third minus sign that came in. All right. And that's, that's, we got to be careful about all that stuff. Like I said, this is why when I, I'll say on the test, oftentimes just give me a set of equations because all the work is done here. The rest of it is just math, right? That if you were given all the time in the world to solve a math problem, you would get it right. All right. But this, this is the, this is the hard part. Yeah, the rest is just algebra from this point. Wouldn't it be uh, IA minus I short circuit? Uh, well, yeah. That's the other reason why it's imp important because yes, you're correct. There's, thank you. <clears throat> I was pontificating and I was wrong. All right, so. so For the record, that's what I said. <laughs> all right, for the record. Okay, so, so, <laughs> so let's. Let's be careful. I got a minus sign in the front here. And this is why, this is why I said I, I would have gone on to check that here. So if I look at this, I'm going to say I've got minus comes in at the front times minus J. All right. And then I'm going to put my currents in. So IA is into the plus terminal. And this is why it's important. So I'm actually glad it's here because ISC is going against it. So with the ISC term, I technically have three negative signs there. So I, I want to be careful about that. Okay. Now, <clears throat> Um, looking at this here, that if, if I look at this, I've got one equation here, two equations. How many unknowns do I have? Two unknowns. I got three. Don't oh, I? three. True, true. Yeah, yeah. But I can get rid of one of them, which, which I can get rid of VX pretty easily, right? What is VX? I Vx is, yeah, is negative J times Ia minus Isc, right? I plug that into equation one, and I've got two equations and two unknowns, Ib and Isc, okay? You guys follow that? How about online? You guys got questions about that? Oh, I'm just a little lost in the last part. Which part, the, the VX thing? Yeah, for the VX. Yeah, so, so in looking, you gotta look carefully at, at this capacitor. So VX, you know, I've got a current IA that goes into the plus terminal. That's why this guy is four. That's what IA is. And then ISC comes out of the plus terminal. That's why it's got a minus sign there, right? And then I multiply that by minus J because minus J is the impedance of it. Okay, thank you. And then I would, I would plug that VX into that top equation. So by the time I'm done with that whole thing, what I'm going to get basically is two equations look like this, right? I'm going to get um, IB times one plus J um, minus JISC equals four minus four J and minus eight J, let me do it this way. Do it this way. IB plus ISC times minus one minus two J equals negative eight J. That will be the two equations that I get if I simplify those guys down. Now, what I what I would do is I I would do my math by hand like this until I get to this point, and then I would say well, this becomes a matrix problem: one plus J minus j one and minus one minus two j all times i a i b oh no i sorry i b and i s c is equal to four minus four j and minus eight j okay yeah yeah so for all the problems that i do here i upload all the okay. the matlab as well where did the uh top equation come from is that just um did you just plug in vx into uh, IBM? I did. yeah okay. i did i plugged in the vx there 
So that's the combination of those two. So, so basically I would go through and I would solve that and I would get my I short circuit. So if I solve this guy, my I short circuit works out to be 2.5298 with an angle of 18.4349. Like that, okay. All right, so, all right. Back to the original problem. Well, what did I ask at the beginning? I wanted a seven and equivalent, right? Which means that I have VOC and an impedance here, ZEQ. Okay. How do I find that ZEQ? It is, but how do I find that given what I now know? What's that guy? Yeah, VOC divided by ISC, like that. All right, that's that's what it is, okay? And so I know what those numbers are. If I plugged in those numbers, I would end up with uh, some result here. Negative one plus two J, all right? Now, um, some of you will ask me years later from now how that's even possible. That's a weird number, right? That's weird because it's got a negative resistor effectively. It's possible here because I have a dependent source. Dependent sources can make weird things happen, all right? That's not, that's a little bit beyond us in this class. I mean, you don't need to worry about that, right? It's just a circuit as far as you're concerned. Okay. Um, questions about this? Uh, when we have a super mesh, uh, is it a hard requirement that we don't have uh, current sources in that mesh? It is, yeah. A super mesh happens when I've got two loops, two KVL loops that happen that share a current source between them. So in this case, you know, looking at this, one mesh is this one, and then one mesh is this one. So those meshes share on their perimeters a current source. So anytime I, that, that's when you, you basically cut the current source out when you do that. So we would have done the same thing if we had like uh, and the, uh, not dependent source in there. I mean, depend, not dependent current in there. It doesn't matter whether it's dependent or independent. Right. Okay. In either case, if as long as there's a current source, that current source effectively amounts to um, a current source. I mean, it's whether it's independent or dependent, doesn't matter. All right. All right. All right. So let's. There could be a resistor in the branch, but as long as there's a current source in there, yeah, it would. Yeah. Okay. All right. So in this case. Onto a Norton equivalent. All right, now, um, and I don't want to use, I don't want to use super mesh, or sorry, not super mesh, I don't want to use mesh or nodal. All right, so I'm going to, I'm going to do this one as if it was one where I was sort of hard pegged against that. Okay. And again, that so could, it is a condition we not use the mesh or just like uh, we just change it uh, for the different method. So on, you know, on the tests, I would, I would give you certain problems where I say, you know, use a particular method. And if, and if I do that, then, then you have a requirement to use that method. And that's, that's why, we're, that's why we're practicing um, so that you get more comfortable. Um, there's, you know, there's reason to learn multiple methods because especially as you get into electronics, some of the, some of the methods that I think you, you guys tend to want to avoid are ones that probably are a little bit more commonly used. So it's just a matter of trying to get you guys comfortable. Okay, thank you. Yep. All right. All right. <clears throat> so, you know, if I if I look at um, if I look at this particular problem right here, okay, um, and I want to say I want to first of all I want to do a Norton equivalent. So let's just get our head around what that means for a second, right? If I want to do a Norton equivalent, what does that mean? What does a Norton equivalent look like? Uh, a current source in parallel with the load resistor. 
A current source in parallel with a load resistor, and that's important. One of the things I had is a little bit of a gimme, I thought, on the, on the test was, and I tend to do it a lot. So I guess to be more clear, since we're talking about impedances, I'll draw it as a box. It's that. It's not a current source in series, right? It's current source in parallel. And that's a really important uh, point that we need to, to be able to deal with, okay? All right, so in this case, I'm gonna use superposition to try to solve this particular problem, all right? So in, uh, that means the way I'm gonna approach it is basically I wanna find the component of the short circuit, and, and let me be clear, what do we solve for? Not the open circuit voltage here, but what? Current short circuit. Short circuit current, right? This is I short circuit. So I'm gonna put my, I'm gonna put short there, okay? Now, for all intents and purposes, what has that done to the one ohm resistor there? No current. There's gonna be nothing through here. And now you guys use this expression all the time and I probably use it myself too, but current follows the path of least resistance. That's not an accurate statement per se, right? Current follows the path of no resistance right, but not least resistance, okay? More current goes in the path that has least, has less resistance, but not all of it, okay? If I have a one ohm in parallel with a 0.1 ohm, not all the current's going through the 0.1 ohm, all right? So current follows the path of no resistance if that's an option, okay? But not necessarily the path of least resistance, all right? There's, some, there's always some current as long as there's some resistance, okay? All right, so here in this case, I got no resistance in parallel. And, and the way I say that I know there can be no current through here, right? V, so let's call this voltage V. How do I know there can be no current through V? And, and don't say because it's in parallel to the short circuit. Tell me more than that. You have no source? Well, so, so what's, what's the voltage, if I do a KVL around this loop here, so this loop including these two things, the voltage across that resistor, which is I times R, is equal to zero, right? So what is I? Zero. Zero. All right, that's the way to see that, I think. All right, is, is that I have imposed that there be zero volts across the resistor. If there's zero volts across the resistor, then by definition, there is zero amps through the resistor. That comes from Ohm's law, okay? KVL and KVL, KVL and KCL and Ohm's law are the only things that are true, all right? Everything else is just gibberish floating around in your brain, okay? All right, let, let KVL, KCL, and Ohm's law be your guide. That's, that's my, my basic rule, okay? All right, so given, given all this, then I can basically pretend that this guy's not there, all right? And I want to find the component of the short circuit caused by the six volt source and the four amp source. So I want to start first with the six volt source. All right, so let's put a short there and let's redraw the circuit here. So I want to get rid of the four ohm or the four amp source, right? So if I turn off a four amp source, what's it become? Open. Open, right? Turn off a current source, that means its current becomes zero. A branch that has zero current is gone. It doesn't exist, right? So, so basically then I've got a six volt source. I got my minus J here. And I've got my one ohm. I've got this J here. I've got one ohm down here. And then I've got, I'm going to draw it like this. Okay. And this is the current here. I, what I was calling I short circuit comma 6V, because it's coming from the six volt source. I don't know what to call it. That's probably a bad name. I'm already making mistakes with it. Like that, okay? Now, you guys see how I drew that? I, I'm trying to get the Norton equivalent. 
Somebody was in the bathroom when I was talking about that. <laughs> So, so I'm trying to get that current over there. I just make sure you guys follow where I, where I was going with this. So, so where, so I drew the one ohm over here. Which one ohm resistor was that that I drew? Uh, right. This guy is gone. Right. We already we argued that. So, rather than me be hasty, I can draw it there. Okay. It's this one ohm on the top. Okay. All right. So. How to approach that problem there? How should I approach that? <clears throat> yeah, so if I, so how can I simplify that circuit down? Total impedance. Total impedance. Yeah, total impedance. And so um, I'm going to redraw the circuit over here. So basically, here's my six volts. All right, here's my minus J. This was one ohm. This was J. And then over here, we had a one ohm and a one ohm. All right, so this circuit and this circuit. All right, so I want to simplify this guy down and I want to get an equivalent impedance that this guy sees. Right? It's the, so we got to think equivalent impedance. What impedance does this guy see? So I guess what I would call that is, I don't know, Z six volts. So the verbiage would be the impedance from six volts. Yeah, what you're effectively doing is you're trying to take that network and you're trying to get it down into something where here's six volts and here's the impedance that he sees. And this is, this would be my, I guess what I would call Z six volts, the impedance that he sees. And so I think. Go ahead. Uh, so then if that's the case, we would start from the one ohm resistor in series with the one ohm resistor and work our way in. You Exactly. I would okay. start, usually I start farthest away from that source and Got start okay. to find it down from there. Perfect. Just like when we do the Thevenin, you know, I start farthest away from the terminals because I'm looking at a source connected to the terminals, right? So in this case, I start farthest away from that source. So in this case, well, here's, here was one ohm and here was one ohm. What do, what do I see about that one ohm and that one ohm over there? They're in series. They're in series. That says that this network here becomes six volts minus J one ohm J and two ohms. Like that, right? So then if I had to say, what's my Z, this Z six volts, I'm gonna do it straight from this guy and I'm gonna do it over here where I already wrote it. All right, let's, let's simplify it straight away from here. I have a series combination, don't I? Yes. Okay, so my series combination is minus J, right? So I got a capacitor in series with what? So if I, as I go around the loop here in a, clockwise direction. I go through minus J and then what, what impedance do I go through in that series? Parallel, parallel resistors. Yep. Both resistors. Yep. One in parallel with two. Okay. And then what? Plus, inductor. 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 Plus J. Yeah. So those guys just so happen to cancel each other out. That's handy. Okay. Um, and if I go through this, this math here and I, so <clears throat> If we remember back to what it was that we were trying to, we were trying to compute this. Okay. All right. What I have just done is I've simplified this network and into this guy right here. Okay. So what current is, is that? So the current that's flowing here, right? What current is that in the, in the original circuit? I'm sorry. I didn't get to hear. Is that, are you talking about I short circuit? Yeah, so I short circuit six volts is this current over here, right? That's the current we're trying to find. Given the way I just simplified this circuit down to this network here in the upper uh, right. Okay, okay. What, uh, what current am I able to solve for with that? It's the current through the capacitor. The current through the capacitor. So that would be, what did I call it here? Um, I called it 
for whatever reason, I called it IB. Like that. Okay. So I just found with that's and so that these two are the same. Okay. And so I would say IB is equal to six volts divided by that Z six volts that I just found. Right. If I do the math on that, so plug in that expression, I I work that works out to nine amps. Like that. Okay. Now, how do I find out this I short circuit six volts? From that it's a third of ib it's a third of ib and the reason for that is you're doing a current divider when you do that right so i'm looking at this branch right here right so i sc six volts right that would be i sc six volts again the, the way i do this is i look at this and i say well what's the voltage across this combination it's one in parallel with two times the current that flows in. That current is IB, right? Divided by what? Total impedance. Not the total impedance here, but so. Oh, sorry. Yep. Yeah. The impedance of the two interest, volts. the two ohm resistor. Right, which, which is going to work out to be, in this case, one-third. So this guy's going to become three amps. All right. So I've, I've got what that current is. So I, ISC six volts we've found is three amps. All right. Now, that doesn't mean it's three amps constant, right? It's three amps with an angle of zero. Right. So that means this guy would be in the real world three cosine omega t. All right. Sometimes you lose track of the fact that what this thing refers to in the real world is a sinusoidal signal. All right. Once we're once we're just thinking about impedances straight away. All right. Now I got to figure out this I short circuit four amps. Okay. So let me try. I guess what I'm going to do is. Try to copy this guy over again. Stop giving me design ideas. Okay. All right. So again, we're trying to find ISC. So I put that short circuit here. And now I'm trying to do it for the four amps, right? So I'm going to call this guy I short circuit four amps like that. All right. Now, what do I do? If I'm only doing for the four amp source, what do I do with the six volt source? Turn it to zero. Turn it off, which means turn it to zero what? Short circuit. Zero volts short circuit. Yeah. So basically what that says is this guy becomes, here's my four amps. Uh, so minus J. Here's my one ohm. Now I'm going around this loop here like that. What do I do with the, so I got, I got to this one ohm, then what do I do? to close this loop. I got a short circuit here. So do I need to include the one ohm resistor again? No, right? So that guy's gone and I got that, okay? Now, what I wanna do probably here is bearing in mind the current I wanna get is this guy, I short circuit four amps here. That's the current I wanna find. But to do that, what am I gonna try to do? I'm gonna try to simplify this circuit down, right? Um, and how am I going to do that? Can I ask a separate question? Yeah. That the, the short circuit through the one ohm resistor, like, can you do mesh? You can take it out. Does, does that just, mean that our GEP would be wrong <coughs> if we just left that one ohm resistor and started solving? That's a different question. Let's, we'll come back to that question. So um, 
I got I got a couple of ways to approach this problem. So I heard I heard online somebody saying mesh, right? Um, do we need to do a delta y transformation? I have never done one of those in my life. No, uh, total impedance. And, and I, yeah, no, I've never done one of those, and I don't know. I, I mean, I think in I think in like 1925 that was probably useful, um, but but it, it's in in so delta y transformations. We'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later on when we get the power, all right? Because, well, but I mean, we don't typically have un... So delta Y applies when I have three-phase circuits. Three-phase circuits happen all... Duke gives us all three-phase power. So we, we have that and it, 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 it does apply, but typically it's not what I call unbalanced. And I don't have to do delta Y transformations that are complicated like those, all right? Um, that doesn't mean a whole lot to you, but usually if I have a three phase circuit, the impedances in each branch are the same. All right, and so the, usually it simplifies down. Now they're not the same, ever the same, but they're usually very, very close to each other. Um, we'll t we got more to say about that when we get to power later on, okay. All right, anyway, um, when, I'm, when I'm looking at, at this circuit now, yeah, mesh would be probably a way to do this, right? Um, I'm not gonna do mesh here. All right, I could, but I'm not. Um, what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, I want to use the Thevenin approach to simplify this guy down. Um, and the way I'm going to do that is effectively, I want to say, I want to remove all this stuff here. I want to find a Thevenin equivalent looking this way. Okay. Now, what would what would be the indicator to kind of make that the best choice? Just no choice is the best choice. Yeah, I've learned that the hard way. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, so so the best choice may be whatever whatever way you're most comfortable with, right? My my job here is to make sure that I try to make you comfortable with as many of the approaches as as the community of electrical and computer engineers is deemed appropriate. All right, um, you know, there's there's lots of I don't know. Trying to think of a good example, but it's like I don't know. There's probably a lot of people who play tennis that can't hit a backhand. If they could, they'd be good tennis players, right? Uh, it's the only example that can come to my mind is that you, that you have to kind of be a full player to be able to play the game, right? And that's kind of kind of why. Um, you know, it's, you know, Shaq, Shaq could never make a free throw. Right. And that I feel was like you just called me a, a bench warmer in the engineering <laughs> world. I, I could, yeah, maybe I did. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I did. I don't know. But, but I mean, you know, my, my job though, is to get you off the bench and get you into the game. So that means we gotta, we gotta, we gotta warm you up a little bit more. So, um, I'm going to, I'm going to use seven and cause I know most of you guys looking at this circuit probably would say mesh. I, I, and I, and I think that's, and there's again, nothing wrong with that, but again, my job is to get you familiar with some of the other ways. So what I want to do is I want to get a seven and for everything to the left of that dashed line, which means I want to get some sort of a VOC, some sort of a Z equivalent. And then I want to put the one ohm back in there. Right. And then the current that flows through here is that ISC four amps. And Anthony, I was really just trying to compare you to Shaq. Shaq couldn't make a free throw, right? But but he's still all famer. Yeah, yeah. I'll take it. Okay. All right. All right. So all right, how do I approach this problem then? I've got this, let's draw it over here. So I've got my short, my minus J, my one ohm. Oh, forgot this guy. My J, my one ohm. Okay. My four amps, my one ohm. Okay. And I want to find that VOC. That's right, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. And this guy was four amps. All right. How do I approach that? Uh, we have the negative J and the one ohms above in series, correct? 
the negative J and the one ohm in series. So let's take a look at this. Yeah, so what I would probably do with this at this point is in looking at this guy in particular, you are correct. They are in series with each other. So I would kind of redraw this guy and say, well, doesn't he look like this? Here's my four amps. Here is my minus J and one ohm. And then there's a parallel path there, right? Isn't there? What's the parallel path? Oh, inductor? Yeah, there's an inductor there, an impedance of J. And then they all come back together and run their current through that one ohm, don't they? Like that? Yeah. You guys follow how, I mean, it's, those are the same circuits there. Uh, the, the funny thing is I did the exact, I redrew it too, but I entirely different. I think it's crazy how different they look, but they're the same. Well, so, so what did I, what did I do? So I looked at this and I said, the, the first, first thing to do probably is get rid of that. There's no current flowing out there. Okay. Now it might get a little bit easier. Now what I, now I can more clearly see that these two here minus J and one are in parallel are in series with each other because there is the same current flowing through those for sure. Okay. And the voltage by KVL voltage across here and the voltage across that combination is the same. So that's what leads me to the simplification here. And, and then whatever current went through here and whatever current went through here, they reunite to be four amps again back here. Okay. So um, this, this is about, this is on the harder end, the simplification type of stuff that, that you would see, right? But it's a, good, it's a good practice example, all right, for that reason, I think. So, you know, looking at this, then I've got it. Now, look, what would I, what would I do here um, to solve for this? Well, what I'd want to do is I'd want to solve for, what is this current right here? Four amps. That's four amps, right? It has to be because I got a four amp source in that loop. What's the current here? Well, I can I can do a, a voltage divider there, can I? Or no, sorry, not a voltage divider, current divider. Current divider, right? So that would be, if I looked at this, how would I approach that? I would say that four amps, so I, I guess what I'll call this, I called this I1, okay? I1 is equal to what? I want to do this as a current divider. So for the current in that feeds the divider, current going into the divider, I'm going to say on top, I have one minus J in parallel with J, all divided by- One minus J. One minus J. Okay. And that result um, would end up giving me ultimately 4J as the current there, okay? If I went through that approach, okay? You guys follow that? All right. So um, then once, once I'm done that, I gotta still gotta find what VOC is. I haven't done that yet. What is VOC? How would I figure that out? VOC, remember, was this voltage here? I short circuit over. Short circuit voltage. Oh, well, I see. VOC is the voltage across the two one ohm resistors, isn't it? So that would be if if I so that would be whatever that current was I one that I just found times one ohm plus four amps times one ohm. All right, which if I put, plug the numbers in for that, it becomes four plus four J. Four plus four J, okay? Now, I was trying to get this circuit here, everything to the left of the dashed line here, I was trying to get that into a seven and equivalent. All right, so I just found the VOC. How do I get the ZEQ of that guy, the equivalent impedance? Turn off the turn off the four amp source, right? Turn off the four amp source. So that means that this guy is 
minus j one ohm one j one ohm like that all right now what's the zeq there well yeah so where do i start my simplification here let's start from the negative j to the one the net well almost i start from as far away from the source as i can get so the farthest away i can get from the source is the minus j you're right oh, okay, okay right what what can i say about that minus j in series with the j it's in series with the j so in this case it just so happens minus j plus j is zero now what's the next simplification i can make oh zero Zero in parallel with one is, is zero. zero. This guy that. becomes one ohm. Like that. All right. Now, <clears throat> this idea where I had a J and a minus J is really important in circuits. It's, it's a phenomenon called resonance, right? We deal with that phenomenon later, but it, it, where you can have impedances canceling each other. All right. That's a, that was just the answer here. There's nothing, don't worry your head about that for now. We'll talk more about that stuff later. But um, what I've done with this case is I've turned this guy into VOC equal to, what did I say? It was 4, four plus 4J, four, 4 plus 4J. Four and this is 1 ohm. Okay. And then I was making it a Thevenin an equivalent, and I had a 1 ohm at the terminals. So I'm going to put the one ohm here like that. And what I was solving for was this current, ISC four amps was what I called it. ISC four amps, looking at this must be what? VOC divided by two. Yeah, right. So uh, that would be two plus J2. Okay. All right. So what I've done now is I've solved out um, for this whole thing. So I, I basically, so what was I doing back to my original problem? Okay. Is I was looking at this network, trying to find a Norton equivalent. So now I have found the short circuit current from the six volt source. And I have found it from the four amp source, which was two plus two J, which if I add those all together, this guy becomes 5.3852 with an angle of 21.8 degrees. Okay. Now, I'm not <laughs> still not done finding my my Norton equivalent, am I? Shit. Yeah. Now I got to turn off my sources. So, um, where's my original picture? Um, It this way. Um, so I have a six volt source minus J one ohm J four amps one ohm. There's a one ohm and a one ohm. Okay, and we're trying to find the equivalent impedance looking into those terminals. Okay, ZEQ, that's our job. Okay, so to do that, we're trying to find the impedance that would be quote unquote seen by a source connected at the terminals, right? So in this case, that means I got to start my simplification where? From as far away from the terminals as I can. So six volts is a good solution. Now, before I do that, what do I got to do with all those sources internal? Turn them off. Turn them off. Okay. So a current source off means no current. No current means short circuit. Sorry, open circuit. Open circuit. Right. What about the six volts? Turn them off means no voltage, means he becomes a short. Okay. All right. So then how do I start simplifying this? J minus J minus J. 
Okay, yeah. So we start from as far back as we can. J and minus J are in series. So then I can simplify this guy to zero in parallel with one ohm. Then there's a one ohm down here. Then there's a one ohm up here. Boy, I haven't left myself with much space. One ohm down here. It's not very good. All right. What do I what do I do with that? Uh, even before I start trying to simplify this, right? I got. I have. What do I have? Well, you have that one and zero. So. Yeah, but one and zero. They're what are the, how are they parallel series? They're parallel. They're parallel. So you get. You'd end up with one in series with one. Yep. So zero. Well, I'd end up with zero in parallel with one, right? Yep. And then, yeah, so the one. I'll start. Sorry. Yeah, the one on yeah. top. Okay. And then, like that. So you go to parallel with the short circuit. That means there's no resistance there. <clears throat> so, so when I have zero in parallel with R, like this, that's a bad R. Right. Zero. I is no R is not. Okay. How much how much current's flowing through this guy? Zero. Zero. It means all the current would flow through here. So any current that entered this network, none of it. So if I let's say I put a voltage source across here, right? If I put a voltage source across a short and a resistor, V equals. So think about this for a second. V zero equals. V equals IR. What is V is is something here, right? Um, how much current could flow through this? R, this R has some value. How much current could flow through this here? Through R? Yeah. None, right? Because essentially all of the current is going to try to flow through through that parallel that parallel branch right there. So it's not that R is. That well, no on first of all, this is a this is what I would call bad circuit, right? Actually, what I drew there was kind of nonsense, right? Because I've I have zero equals v in that case, right? Now, that's one of those things where you know God said that's not allowed, right? On day six and a half, He was like, yeah, no, you can't do that. There's there's actually a resistance somewhere inside that voltage source, right? You know, so that's hey, let's let's not think about that problem. Right. Basically, what you're saying is, if I if I have zero volts, if I and I'm putting a short, it's like putting a zero volt source across a resistor. So there has to be zero current going through that guy. So in other words, he has no impact. So any current that would flow would go through this short. This is the whole. The current will take the path of no resistance. All right. So that's that's what's happening there. Now here's the question. A lot of people would probably say, then here's the ZEQ. So my final ZEQ is what? Here. Two in parallel with one. Very good. Right? They're not, it's not three ohms. A lot of people would say three ohms. Right? But from the perspective of those terminals, right, a current flowing into the terminal, some of it would go through the one ohm, some of it would go through the, the two ones in series. And so this, that is whatever that is. Okay. So at the end of the day, I have simplified that circuit down into ISC, which was which was what? It was five. Well, no, that was, it was, yeah, 5.38 with an angle of 21.8 degrees. So 5.38 with an angle of 21.8 degrees. And that guy is in parallel with one in parallel with two. Like that. Okay. <clears throat> and that's, Example wise, about all we got time for it for today. Okay. All right. So we got recitation Friday. Um, Friday, I'll go through Friday. Or today? Friday. Well, so I got office hours tonight, 7 30. Um, oh, yeah. And then we have recitation. It's officially recitation. It's just going to be me doing examples again on Friday. Um, and then I don't know. We may, we may do some more examples again Monday, but I'm going to start moving on next week into my next topic, which is going to be op amps. Okay. Op amps. Uh, Dr. Cox. Yeah.
Uh, I was wondering if, um, you know, how Zy books you open up the pre the problems, the practice problems. Yes. I was um, wondering if you could do that with these. Yeah, I will. I yeah, and that question came to me from a couple of people. I I will um, see that we get more practice problems opened up. So just just for your forward planning, right? Um, okay, I guess I can't. I need to reboot my computer before I can use the start menu. But the the next test, test three, which is going to be all about this stuff, is not not this Friday. Obviously, it's the I think it's the nineteenth. I think that's right. The nineteenth. Yeah, it's the nineteenth. That's yeah. correct. So it's coming up. All right. Um, I got office hours tonight, seven thirty. Um, so you guys want to come in with questions there? If you haven't started it yet, you should start it because I have a feeling it's going to take you some time to start that homework if you haven't yet. Okay. All right. That's it. See you guys. Thank you. Yeah.